All right, our next unit is on the verb star and its use with feelings. So this verb, a star, means to be in a temporary sense because if you look at the uses of this verb at the bottom, you use it when you're describing feelings or conditions. So for example, you're feeling um, tired right now, you're feeling exhausted, you're feeling angry. Those things change minute to minute, maybe day to day. So that's a very temporary sort of thing. Um, it also is very temporary when you locate people or things because people walk around, they drive around, um, things move, they're in your backpack, on the table, on the floor, in your locker, at home. So things definitely move, people definitely move. And also you use it when you're talking about present progressive, which is writing an ING sentence because that is expressing the immediacy that you are doing something right now. I am talking right now. So if this verb was a normal AR verb, we would have studied this verb with our AR verb unit. However, it is an irregular verb, but not as irregular as some. And we've actually used certain conjugations of this already with como estas or como esta. So you're slightly familiar with this verb from our conversations. But go ahead and conjugate this verb on the chart on page 69 and fill it in as if it's a regular AR verb. Pause the video and then start it again, again once you're done with that. All right, so if you've conjugated this for a regular AR verb, you should have wrote esto, estas, esta, estamos, estais, and están. Again, that was if it was a regular AR verb, but as I mentioned earlier, it is an irregular verb. Now, it's not as irregular as, as others because um, it has two slight changes. The first slight change is there are a couple of these conjugations that have accents, and two of them we've already studied. Estás, as in como estás, and como está. So we've studied those. The other one is están. So put an accent over each of those A's. So the bottom four conjugations all have accents over the A, just as in the Vesotros form. The other small change is to the conjugation for yo. It is not a sto, but a estoy. So you have estoy, estás, está, estamos, estáis, and están. Now also write down the meanings. So again, you don't say I be tired. You say I am tired. You don't say I or you be exhausted. You say you are. Esta means you formal are or he or she is or it is. If we're talking about um, conditions of a thing or locating a thing, the book is on the table. Estamos translates to we are, whether you use nosotros or nosotras. Estais translates to you all in formal are, and again, whether that's the masculine or feminine version of vosotros or vosotras. And están translates to you all formal are, and they are, whether we're talking about people or we're talking about things, like the books are in my backpack, um, or it can be they as in the people, my friends, they are um, at home. All right, so those are the conjugations, the meanings, and the uses of this verb. So our first unit is going to be just on number one, on feelings and conditions. And so turn the page to page 70, and you'll see there's a variety of facial expressions that are trying to um, maybe indicate what these Spanish words mean. Most of them are pretty good. Maybe some of the faces don't match very well. I did as good of a job as I could to try to make sure the face looked like what the feeling is. The first thing that I want you to notice about all of the feelings or conditions on this page is that most of them end in O slash A. That should indicate to you, just like colors that we studied, that these are adjectives. And when a word in Spanish is an adjective, it means it needs to be modified or changed to match the who or what that it's describing. So if you're describing a boy, 
that is feeling this way, you would use the O. If it's a girl that's feeling this way, you use the A. If it's plural boys, you have the OS. If it's plural girls, it's AS. Now, not all of them end in O slash A. There are a few, like triste on this slide, that ends in an E. So the only change you can do to triste is add an S to make it plural. So there's no masculine and feminine, just singular and plural. The other good news about these words, a lot of them are cognates. And you don't have to know all of them on this page. It's kind of just a, a list of vocab that you have access to. Um, so we're going to go through and define them. And I will tell you which ones that you need to know so you can highlight those. All right, agotado means exhausted. And it's a word that you need to know. So go ahead and highlight that. Confundido is, I would call it a cognate because the first five letters are the same. It means confused. The, sec, or the third word is ecstatico. Notice there's an accent over that A in the middle. And it's a cognate, but notice the difference in English. There's no X in the word ecstatic, but there is in Spanish. Enfermo looks like um, enfermera, and we use that word at the beginning of the year if you said me permite ir a la enfermera, you asked if I could go to the nurse. So this is the feeling or condition of feeling sick. Enfermo is sick. You need to know that one as well. The last one on this line is a cognate. Sospechoso is suspicious. And so you need to know all five of those, so make sure you have those highlighted. All right, the next row, enojado means angry. And to me, that's a false cognate because it looks like the word enjoy. And um, again, maybe you can make a connection that some people do enjoy being angry. But to me, that's opposite. It's a false cognate. Esthetico, H's are silent, accent over that E in the middle. And again, it's a cognate, but note the difference in English. It's H-Y, not H-I, to say the word hysterical. And sometimes we use the word hysterical to mean funny. This is the hysterical. That means kind of out of control hysterical. Frustrado is a cognate. It means frustrated. Triste means sad. And emocionado is a cognate. It means emotional. So you need to know all five of those as well. All right, the third line, avergonzado means embarrassed. And the way I remember avergonzado is that the average person gets embarrassed at some point in their life. Um, and again, avergonzado is a big long word and embarrassed is a big long word as well. The next one, contento, looks like content. And it sort of means that, but really it means that you're feeling happy with how you are that day. Maybe not really happy, not really sad, but you're kind of in the middle. You're content. You're happy with where you're at. Malicioso means you're malicious, and you don't need to know that one. But again, malicious just means you're really mean. Asqueado means disgusted, and you don't have to know that word. And asustado means frightened, and you don't need to know that one. The next row, rabioso, means rabid or furious. Um, you don't need to know that one, but um, again, the word rabid means mad, and this is beyond mad. This means you're furious. Aburrido means bored, and it's not a cognate, but it looks like the word burrito. And if you ate burritos every day, you would be bored with your lunch. Nervioso is a cognate. It means nervous. Comodo, I would say it's cognate-ish because it means comfortable and the first three letters are the same. Deprimido is a cognate and it means depressed. So you need to know the last four in that row. So make sure those are highlighted. All right, our last couple of rows, demasiado means overwhelmed. You don't need to know that one, so no need to highlight it. Just define it on the page. Esperanzado means hopeful. You don't have to know that one either. Solitario, it looks like solitaire, and solitaire or solitary means you're alone. 
And so the feeling you have when you're alone is that you're lonely. You need to know that one. Amar telado, if you look at the first four letters, amar means to love. And so this is the feeling of being in love or love struck. You don't need to know that one, so no need to highlight it. And celoso means jealous, and you need to know that one. All right, our last row, cansado means tired. You need to know that one. Sorprendido is a cognate, and you need to know that one. It means surprised. Ansioso is a cognate, and you need to know that one. It's anxious. Pasmado means amazed. I don't know, that one looks maybe more like frightened than amazed, but pasmado means amazed. You don't have to know that one. And timido looks like timid, but most of you say the word shy instead of timid. And notice there's an accent over the first I. All right, so those are the ones that you need to know on page 70. The other ones that we have somewhat studied before and also can be used as feelings are bueno or buena, which means good, and malo or mala, which means bad. So those can be used as feelings, um, but when you translate it, you don't say I am good, you say I am feeling good or I am feeling bad. That's why, um, well, when we did the answer to como estas, we used bien because that means more well, I am well or I am fine. Um, if you're going to say yo estoy buena, it means I am feeling good. And mal we've used before, again, to answer como estas, and that meant badly. So when you put an O or an A on it, now it means um, good or bad instead of well and badly.